Today we're starting part one of a weirdly unintentional two-parter. Two fish, two evolutionary mysteries, united, somehow, by sand. Just beneath the churning waves of the Atlantic Ocean, this seemingly empty water is host to an invisible menagerie. Plankton. Innumerable tiny species drifting on ocean currents. Each individual, I love this, is called a plankter. Among them are larvae who will develop into countless species of fish. But if you look close, some of those larvae are not like the others. As their neighbors start to inhabit familiar forms, these guys get freaky. Specifically, hairs in their inner ear, which fish use to stay oriented in the water, shift so that swimming on their side feels normal to them. One side of their body turns pale and colorless, while the other can grow chromatophores, letting them change their colors. One of their eyes starts to move up and over their heads. They lose their swim bladder, the thing that lets fish stay effortlessly afloat. And with that, they drift down to the sandy bottom to start their adult lives as flatfish. They might remind you of skates or rays, but I want to be clear on how different they are. Skates and rays gradually flattened out from what was a more vertical shark-like body in a way that makes sense. But flatfish just… they just flipped over. Their overall body plan is still the same as their vertical relatives in a lot of ways. They just have both eyes on one side of their heads. And damn it, it worked! There are more than 800 species of flatfish in the world, 39 in Canada. Their ability to both hide from predators and be ambush predators themselves has made them really successful, but also a giant evolutionary headache. All the way back to Charles Darwin. Flatfish drove him crazy. One of his biggest critics, George Jackson Mivart, a Catholic and zoologist in that order, used them as a cudgel against Darwin. Intellectually, not literally. The accidental occurrence of such a spontaneous transformation is hardly conceivable. But if this is not so, if the transit was gradual, how such transit of one eye a minute fraction of the journey toward the other side of the head could benefit the individual is indeed far from clear. In other words, from the folks who brought you what good is half an eye comes what good is an eye halfway around your head. How do you square evolution's slow incremental progress with the flatfish? Good question. For a long time, we had no good answers. Flatfish seem to appear in the fossil record about 60 million years ago with no transitional fossils, no smoking gun with that hypothetical eye halfway around their head. That was where we were stuck until 2008. That's when researcher Matt Friedman took a closer look at some overlooked fossils using CT scans to discover that we'd had the missing link all along. A fish with one of its eyes halfway in transit from one side of its head to the other. And the irony is these fossils had been unearthed more than 200 years ago, meaning while this question was giving Darwin migraines, the evidence was just sitting there gathering dust in a museum. If only Darwin had had a CT scanner. In any case, big win for the theory of evolution. But the question remains, how on earth could this be advantageous enough to be selected for? Well, we've got another piece of information to work with. Flatfish seem to have appeared around 60 million years ago. Can you think of anything else that happened around 60 million years ago that might have opened up avenues for evolution? Something that, for example, I don't know, maybe wiped out half of all life on Earth? Nature abhors a vacuum. And the aftermath of the Chicxulub impactor, the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs, left a lot of vacuums. Including, the theory goes, bottom-dwelling ambush predators, a niche just begging to be filled. And we have some evidence of this today. Non-flatfish fish will sometimes exhibit similar isolated behaviors, like hiding temporarily from predators on the bottom, digging into sand, or lying in wait for prey. So let's say flatfish ancestors really leaned into that behavior and made it their whole deal. At this point, they've still got an eye on each side of their head, so they'd likely prop themselves up on their bottom-facing fin. And it's really from this pose that their evolution starts to make sense. Because any individual with their bottom eye a little closer to the top of their head gets a wider field of view and less need to prop themselves up. That evolutionary pressure can slowly add up to a complete transit of the eye, and fast. Another study in 2016 showed through DNA analysis that it only took about 3 million years. Light speed in evolutionary terms. 
The flatfish experiment clearly proved successful. But maybe the only way it got the chance was thanks to the suddenly wide open playing field in the wake of the Chicxulub impactor. In that world, and maybe only in that world, could a fish just decide to flop over on the ocean floor and today represent 800 species worldwide? If you're enjoying these videos, consider throwing me a few bucks a month on Patreon. It is the best possible thing you can do to ensure that they will keep coming.